2023 saw a good number of Nike running shoes and I tested a good number of them. From my experience, having already run many miles in these shoes, which of them will I recommend now as many shoes are going on end of year sale? That is what this video is about. Which deals are worth it and which are a waste of precious funds? Hi guys, still your man Dr. CY the running dog and thanks for tuning in. If you are yet to subscribe, please do us a favor and click the subscribe button. And if you like the contents of this video, do not hesitate to also click the like button. We appreciate you for that. Now, I tested and reviewed a good number of Nike shoes this 2023. I ran in the Vaporfly 3, the Infinity 3 and 4, Invincible 3, Windflow 10, Zoomfly 5, Pegasus 40, Vomero 16, Renew Run 4, Renew Ride 3, React Mile 3, the Nike Quest 5, and Downshifter 12. Now, without much ado, let's get to it. I will kick off with the Invincible 3. Now, this is one of the most comfortable shoes in the market. It has a high stack of Zoom X midsole, 40 millimeters in the heel, 31 in the forefoot with a 9 millimeter drop, offering max cushioning with superb bounce and excellent arch support. It has one of the toughest uppers and outsoles, very durable with tons of miles in them. I have run a lot in these shoes, but they are still looking so untouched. They fit through to size with a nice toe box width, excellent traction on the pavement, nice rolling and responsive ride. They are a little heavy though, but with enough bounce to feel much lighter on feet. They are pricey, but still a good value for price for me. So for this shoe, it's a big year if you can get it on any significant discount now. This is based on the comfort, the response, and the durability you expect from this. The second one is the Infinity Run 4. Nike completely revamped this shoe. This came with a new upper and midsole form. One of the most comfortable shoes in the market right now. The upper is soft and stretchy and molds nicely around the feet. More breathable than the Infinity Run 3. Now, the midsole foam is the all-new React X with a 36mm stack in the heel and 26 in the forefoot and the 10mm heel to toe drop. But still, they offer max cushion with much more bounce than the previous version. The ride from these shoes are so smooth and sweet. Very stable also. Very nice shoes for easy runs up to any distance. A little heavy though, coming in at 364 grams in men's US size 11. Also, is great with significant miles buried in them. They are also pricey, but good value for money. So this is also a big year based on the comfort, durability, response, and looks. The number three shoe I have with me here is the Vaporfly 3. Now, this is one of the lightest running shoes in the market. 212 grams in men's US size 11. They fit through to size, very comfortable on feet, bouncy, roomy toe box, very breathable, nice arch support, great shoe for long distance running and racing. I put in some nice distance in them and I have enjoyed it also. Many reviewers rate this shoe very highly, especially for racing, and it has delivered results for them. However, at its price now, it will be a nay for me, purely for price. You know, coupled with the fact that racers are not usually designed for tons of miles. So for now, as a casual runner, I think I can leave these shoes for competitive athletes. What it has delivered for me as a casual runner, I can get for much less. I can do a lot with all that money. Now, the fourth shoe I have is the Winflow 10. If you are looking for functionality at a decent price, then you are in luck here. Nice medium level running shoe. Nike made several nice changes relative to the ninth version. This 10th version came with a more comfortable and supportive upper. More padding, yet 15 grams lighter than the Winflow 9. Better cushioning and stability. Gusseted tongue for a more secure fit. More room in the toe box and even looks better. Overall, what you get is a nice, soft, comfortable and relatively lightweight running shoe with medium level cushioning and a nice, smooth and bouncy ride. Not the most stable shoe though. If you have stability issues, stay away from them. They are solely similar to the Pegasus and good on pavement and light trails. Selling now at around 80 US dollars, these are a huge year for me. One of the best value for money for me this year from Nike. Number 5 is the Zoomfly 5. Now these feature nice breathable upper, high stack of Zoom X midsole with embedded carbon fiber plate, 10 mm drop, thick durable outsole. They feel nice and soft underfoot. However, three areas give me problems in this new version. Number 1 is that these came with a free tongue, so lockdown is not as great as in the fourth version. Also, the padding in the tongue is not much and the laces are relatively thin. The result is that I get blisters on the front of the ankle anytime I go more than 10k in these shoes. The heat tap also impinges on the back of the ankle. Another hot spot. The stability is poor. At 120 to 160 US dollars, this will be a nay for me. I can get a whole bunch of better running shoes at even less price. Number 6. The Pegasus 40. One thing that has remained consistent in the Pegasus series is the durability they offer. 
Aside from that, I don't know what Nike is doing with this series right now. For me, these shoes so far hit the peak at Pegasus 38 and since then has been declining. The 38 was plush and responsive. The 39 came in with less cushion and padding but 25 grams lighter than 38, weighing 285 grams in men's US size 11. The Pegasus 40 came with the same midsole as the Pegasus 39 but with new upper and much more padding and more weight. This time weighing 312 grams in the same size, 27 grams heavier than the Pegasus 39. So what you get is essentially the same ride as the 39 in a heavier package. If you have the Pegasus 38, run with the 40 for a couple of miles and then immediately put on the Pegasus 38 and run in them. I guarantee you won't want to run in the 40 again. The difference is massive. Compared to the 38, the 40 felt like running on cardboard. It was dull and clunky while the 38 is comfortable and lively. Thanks, but a huge name for the Pegasus 40 at any price, except perhaps as casual wear. Number 7. React Miler 3 Now, these are designed for a stable high mileage. Tough, durable upper, lots of ankle padding, plastic heel clip for extra stability. It has full-length Nike React midsole with thick rubber outsole, which guarantees tons of miles. The ride is a little firm but responsive. I got it at 331 Saudi Real, approximately 88 US dollars. A little year for me, good value for price if you consider mileage, you can get out of this. The next shoe I got is the Vomero 16. Now this incorporates Zoom X with air unit for a plush and bouncy ride. Mid foot lace cage and lots of ankle padding give nice lockdown and support. Tough upper with thick also for guaranteed high mileage and good traction. Some colorways are on sale at ridiculous prices now that the 17 is out. I got mine at 375 Saudi Real, approximately 99 US dollars. I saw this today just before making this video on Namshi Saudi for 251 Saudi Real, approximately 67 US dollars. A big year for me at these prices, considering what you can get out of them. These shoes are very, very durable. I also tried the Quest 5 and Downshifter 12. Now, these are budget models, and of course, they didn't really have so much to offer, you know. You might be better off with an older model of a more premium running shoe that is on discount. So guys, that's about it about the Nike shoes that I reviewed this year. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.